Hey, how are you guys doing? It's me, it's Queen Us at Haru, and I'm here today with another exciting edition of Ask an Aquarius. So if you haven't already, please hit the red subscribe button and smack the bell. So, like I always say, if you have a question, let me know. If you have to ask somebody, you might as well ask an Aquarius. So I'll leave my email under here. I'm on Instagram and I'm on Facebook. However, I check Facebook a lot more often than I check anything else. Um, and my emails come directly to my phone. Okay, so if you want a quick response, that's the best way to do it. All right, so somebody gave us a really good question. The person says, uh, this is DK. And they say, hi. Hi, DK. Um, I have seen your videos and they really explain a lot of my life since I am also an Aquarius, January 21st. And many of the things you say reflect my life. I would like to ask you two things. What happens when we die angry? And as an Aquarius, I always hide my anger. But when I get mad, I explode and go off on everyone and end up making people feel hurt for the pain that I feel that they have made me feel. Also, I would like to ask, why do I attack people in a psychological way to try to break them down instead of physically when I am angry? Thank you very much for your time and have a wonderful day. Okay, so I told DK I would do a quick video on this. First of all, let's answer the first question. What happens when you die angry? Well, first of all, um, and I'm going to attach a video. I'm going to attach some information to this video so you can check it out. First of all, anger drives you to death faster. <laughs> so whatever that's going to be, it's going to drive you a lot quicker. Anger inside of the body, and you'll see this when I send this um, particular link from Louise L. Hay. Anger turns into physical problems inside of the body, high blood pressure, ulcers, cancers, um, rigidity, pain, which is like arthritis. Um, it turns into physical problems and those physical problems run you into an earlier grave. It also can turn into psychological and mental and emotional problems you know, now, <laughs> you know, right now. So for, that's the first problem is that it's, it's pushing you. It's like speeding you towards health problems, which are going to speed you towards a, a quicker death. So that's the first problem. Then if you die angry, bitter, sad, there's a very strong possibility. A lot of people believe, and I believe this myself, there's a strong possibility that you will become what we call an earthbound spirit. An earthbound spirit is a spirit of somebody who's died, who's passed over, but they have unfinished business. Like they haven't let go of anger from something, some, from things that have happened in this incarnation. They um, don't go to the light. They don't go to Valhalla. They don't go to Summerland. They don't go to heaven. You know, they don't go anywhere. They stay here, earthbound. And they haunt places, for example. Um, some of them are, you know, seen, they, some of them are seen wailing. Um, and they relive the painful moments of their life a lot of times over and over and over and over again. If you research anything on like paranormal, ghosts, spirits, apparitions, earthbound spirits, you'll see a lot of times the spirits are just living their lives over and over again. They're not even noticing the beings that are currently inhabiting the space. It's like being stuck, <laughs> the ultimate version of stuck on like repeat, <laughs> you know? So you're just repeating it over and over again, your energy, but the, the life is gone. The people are dead. Like everything is done, you know? And this happens a lot with people who have a traumatic death too, but it also happens with people who die with a lot of unfinished business, things that have gone unsaid, things that have gone undone, anger, traumas, hurt, all that kind of stuff can render you an earthbound spirit. 
So it's really good. And a lot of people notice this. A lot, Even people who aren't spiritual or people who aren't into the paranormal notice this. Because if you look at somebody who's about to die and they're aware that they're about to die, they start finishing things up. They start tying up loose ends. They start letting go of things. Some of the times they um, want to re reconcile with people that they, you know, broken with. They start tying that up. Like instinctively, we know this. We know this in our spirit that you need to wrap up all of this so you can go on to your next incarnation, whatever that's going to be. So basically, when you die with all that, you more than likely make it a pretty good chance that you're going to come back. You know, uh, either you're going to stay stuck here, earthbound, or if you do decide to come into another incarnation, you're going to come back with all the karma. You're going to come back with all that karma anyway, so it's best to get rid of as much of it as you can. Think about karma as like um, trash, <laughs> you know. It's best to clean up the trash, you know, as much as possible. So if you do decide to reincarnate, you're not coming back with all that angry energy and all that sad energy because what's going to happen is you're going to draw similar situations to you in the next lifetime. So you have two things going on here, the potential to be earthbound and the potential to drag all that anger, all that sadness, all that pain into the next life. And it doesn't make no sense to do that. It makes sense to just try to reconcile everything and then move on. OK, so that's what happens with that energy. Um, you said I hide my anger, you explode, make everybody feel bad. I used to do that all the time. Even now, sometimes, you know, I'm like, oh, I must control my temper. You know, sometimes that's very true. Um, and it says, why do I attack people in a psychological way? Because Aquarius are mental beings. Um, we don't typically, we can, a lot of us can fight. A lot of us will kick your butt. <laughs> A lot of Aquarius can fight, but that's not what we want to do. We don't really want to hurt people. Aquarius, in our positive sense, we really want to help. We're humanitarians. You know, we came to help the planet. That's our thing. But when we do get attacked or we feel bad or we feel um, irritated even, I know for me, a lot of times my ugliest behavior is when I'm irritated, like, ah, uh, you know, and when that does happen, we lash out. But we don't do it physically like some other signs do because we're more of an intellectual sign. So we do it mentally, verbally, you know. That's why in another video I told you Aquarius are prone to emotional and verbal abuse. N not even on purpose. Just because we get irritated, we get angry, we get whatever, and da -da -da, it just comes out, you know. And when we're irritated or when you back us into a corner, we have poor impulse control. So it's hard for us not to blurt out or say what we've been trying not to blurt out and not to say, you know, it just comes out at that point. Um, it's like a pressure cooker. We can't hold it back anymore and we just explode. So I always tell people that the best thing to do with anger is to try to deal with it before we get so upset about it. The Aquarius gets very angry because generally whatever the thing is, we don't discuss it or address it up front it kind of just weighs on us weighs on us weighs on us and then one day it's like i'm not taking this no more you know we're like popeye <laughs> i've had all i can stand and i can't stand no more and it's like pop but if we took care of it the first time it happened if we addressed it if we discussed it if we dealt with it the first time it happened we probably wouldn't get to that point don't let the pressure build up in the first place. As soon as you feel that something is a problem, and we always know something is a problem, some off-color comment that somebody makes to us or, you know, some kind of way that they, they, you can see they're insulting you, they're doing something, they said something behind your back, you can just see it and you know it's going to be a problem, so address it up front. And we don't do that. And, I mean, I'm still teaching myself to do that because what we'll do is is we'll just be like, okay, it's no big deal. I'll let it go. It's no big deal. I'll let it go. It's no big deal. I'll let it go. And you keep letting it go, but it is a big deal. <laughs> it's a very big deal. And it just builds and it builds and it builds. And then you snap. So my thing to Aquarius that I, I say to anybody who has anything with anger, period, but especially Aquarius in these situations is deal with it. Deal with it quickly. Don't let it build up. And if you deal with it quickly, chances are you're not as angry the first time.
So somebody does something inappropriate and you say, look, um, I really didn't like that. That was very inappropriate. Can you not do that to me, please? Versus six months later and you in a person face like this, <laughs> you know, like try it, <laughs> try it the first time, you know. And I think that for a lot of us, you know, that is very beneficial. And like you said, a lot of us might not get in your face, but we'll be like, you know, back with that sharp tongue. And we're so smart. Oh, we're so smart. And we intuitively know how to hurt somebody. We don't even have to know them. We can just feel what they're insecure about. And if I poke here, here, and here, they're going to crumble. We can feel it. It's really eerie, you know, because that's why I was telling you a lot of Aquarius have abilities. A lot of us are empathic in that way. So we can feel how to hurt someone and we just go for all those pressure points you know and again it's when we're upset and then we burn down the village I always call myself a dragon so I've burned down the village <laughs> everybody's dead there's smoke rising and then I'm crying I'm remorseful that I'm burned down the village <laughs> you know the villagers don't want to hear that because they're dead you know so like I said before, try to deal with it before. Deal with it up front. And that's not easy because, like I said, you know, like you said, we hold our emotions inside. But if we try this process, and I've been doing it, I've been trying it, I've been working on it, and I've noticed that I haven't, I haven't had any, I'm trying to think my last blow up. I haven't had a real bad blow up in a long time. Um, and that's why. That's why, because... Um, I haven't allowed things to build up in a long time. I've been dealing with them quicker and faster, you know. So, and I've been letting go of grudges and letting go of things from the past. So, it's just been releasing and creating more en more energy and more space for love and compassion and to be a better person. So, those are the answers to your questions, DK. Um, think about those things and let me know. Let me know what you think, because um, if you're questioning it and you're thinking about it and you're aware of it, that's that's the most of the battle. Now all you have to do is change the behavior. That's it. And with the anger, um, you need to find ways like any anger that you're holding on to. You need to find ways to let go. And that's all forgiveness work. All forgiveness work. So check out the links that I leave below here. I'm going to leave uh, two of them. Check out the links. Do your forgiveness work and let go of grudges against yourself and against others. And once you've done that, you'll feel less of that hot anger inside of you. And you also won't get as angry as fast. I noticed when I had more grudges, my, t my fuse was shorter. The less grudges I held, the longer my fuse got. So those things will help you tremendously, okay? Take care. Bye-bye.